Hi friends, as always, I'm very excited to see you here. If you're meeting for the first time, I'm Umar Shankar Pandey and this is the Dr. USP channel. I host videos on media, communication, research and statistics on this channel. To stay updated with the latest on this channel, I urge you to consider subscribing to the channel. A research proposal is a brief document that outlines a research project. It describes what research will be done, it explains how it will be done, and it justifies why the research should be undertaken. Let's see how to write research proposals in this video. A research proposal should convince evaluators why is the research worthwhile and whether it is feasible. A research proposal basically sells a research idea. A research proposal is normally produced to enable the proposed research to be evaluated by administrators or mentors. The research proposal is a phase of the overall research process which launches the project. Developing a research proposal is a process of planning, designing and setting up the research including placing it in context and connecting it to the relevant literature. The research proposal document contains the proposed plan for the execution of the research. Mentors use the research statement to get a sense of each applicant's writing ability, intellectual potential, passion and fit with the academic program. The research proposal is an opportunity for you to present your idea and proposed actions for consideration in a shared decision-making situation. It is normally written in about 2000 words or 4 pages. The research proposal must deal with these main themes. What the proposed research is about, what it is trying to find out or achieve, how it will go about doing that what we will learn from that and why it is worth learning. This points to the justification, significance, importance, contribution or expected outcomes of the research. We will now discuss the seven key questions of a research proposal proposed by Martin Denscom. The first question is what is it all about and it includes the title, keywords, aims and background. The second question is about what do we already know about the subject? What has previous research revealed? The third question is about what do we need to find out? What new information is needed? After a review of the existing information, we need to find out what we don't know. The fourth question is about how will we get the necessary information? This is about the details of data collection. The fifth question is about logistics, what will it cost and how long will it take and whether the research is feasible. The sixth question is on ethics and the seventh and the most important question is about the outcome of the research which is very different from the findings. The title needs to contain the right amount of information. It should be long enough to include sufficient detail to inform the reader about the nature of the proposed research but not so long that it loses focus clarity and persuasiveness for example a title could be motivation in the workplace a case study of full and part-time journalists in a weekly newspaper in purulia like the title keywords capture the essence of the research in a nutshell they usually consist of three to six terms that pinpoint the core ideas behind the research. Think of the keywords as terms you would recommend to someone if they wanted to conduct an online search to find your research. The introduction should be strong and engaging. Various logical structures are possible but a progression from more general to more specific issues culminating in stating the topic, problem, 
purpose and research questions for this study often work very well. Whatever structure you choose, make sure your introduction actually does introduce your topic and sets the stage for what follows. The introduction should contain a clear identification of the research area and topic and a general statement of the purpose of the research establishing the problem leading to the study. Casting the problem within the larger scholarly literature, discussing deficiencies in the literature about the problem and targeting an audience and noting the significance of this problem for the audience. Other important questions are, is the proposed study descriptive, explanatory or both? In other words, does it aim to answer questions about what or also about why and how? A theory verification study aims to test a theory or to test hypothesis derived from the theory. Such a study starts with a theory, deduces hypothesis from it and proceeds to test these hypotheses. A theory generation study on the other hand aims to generate or develop a theory to explain empirical phenomenon or findings. Such a study typically starts with questions moves to data and ends with a theory. This has been a common model in some qualitative research, especially where grounded theory is favored. The second question is about the literature review. The literature review is a preliminary review that takes place before the start of the empirical research in a research proposal. It functions as the place where researchers can make a case in support of their proposed project by examining the existing literature on the topic and presenting an argument that the proposed research is worthwhile. In the literature review at the research proposal stage, be careful not to quote in excess. Be careful not to rely too much on secondary sources or neglect practitioner-oriented literature. Also, do not give in to the temptation to include and report everything you know or have read. Your review needs to be selective on an appropriate basis. As someone said, you need to build an argument, not a library. You're also expected to study primary sources. It is normal for research proposals to have between three and seven research questions. It specifies what factors and what relations will be looked at. The aim of the research get operationalized into something on which firm data can be collected. It itemizes what the research will look at and the factors that will be measured or investigated. Research questions can be presented as a series of bullet points or they can be listed as a sequence of statements. Each research question needs to work as a self-contained item, asking about one thing at a time. It is convenient to start with the standard W's, what, when, where, who. You can also add do to this list. Hypotheses are the classic scientific way of formulating a research question. In essence, hypotheses propose a relationship between two or more variables. They do so on the basis of previous theories and findings on the topic and in a way that is testable. Whether constructed as questions, hypotheses or propositions, research questions need to offer a genuine chance of finding the unexpected. The next very important section is on methods. Methods are the specific techniques and tools used in research. Thus, methods is a narrow and specific term. A method section contains information at a very specific level. Methodology, on the other hand, refers to the branch of knowledge concerned with methods. This includes the philosophical assumptions underlying different methods. A summary of the method section could be like this. This qualitative study uses the interpretive paradigm and symbolic interactionism in particular to investigate journalists' perceptions of the value of investigative reporting. 
It will collect interview and documentary data from a deliberately chosen sample of journalists and will use grounded theory methods of data analysis to analyze the data. Important questions regarding methods are are the proposed methods suitable and likely to address the research question or aims? Are the proposed methods likely to produce worthwhile data? Will the methods work in practice? The methods section of the proposal should pinpoint exactly which people or things are the object of the research. The next important question is about resources. Can the research be done properly with the resources that are available? Successful proposals are those that persuade the reader that the planned research stands a realistic chance of being achieved. It addresses the elements of financial costs, time and the skill set of the researcher. The core principles of research ethics are no potential harm to the participants, voluntary consent and scientific integrity and objectivity. A good starting point for this is to adopt a suitable code of research ethics and to identify this clearly within the proposal. It must be emphasized that the projects have to remain within the reams of the law. Finally, research proposals need to state clearly what outcomes are envisaged from the research. This is because those who evaluate proposals look to the anticipated outcomes as a crucial factor when deciding whether the proposed research is going to deliver anything of value. Outcomes refer to what will be done with the findings from the research, hence it is possible at this stage. An ideal research proposal should have introduction, literature review, research questions, methods, ethics and outcomes. Thanks for staying along friends. As always, it has been a delight having you here. I'll be back with another video very soon. Till then, have a great time.